What is up guys, Leg Day here, and in the last week we have seen the reveal of the 8-man Spitfire roster, so I'm here to ask the question, how big of a downgrade has London Spitfire gone through? They have lost almost all of their original roster with the exception of Krillin who has remained, and now they've got to pick up 7 new people. The names have been revealed, but what do we think of the players? Let's start off with the main tank, J-Mac. Previously, over the last year, we've been playing with LGE Huya over in Contenders China. And uh, he's also played in three international events, the NEXT Cup Spring, the Pacific Showdown, and Contenders Gauntlet, across which LGE Huya did not win a single match. They only won three maps out of the matches that they played, so when it comes to international competition, J-Mac isn't exactly striking me as the brightest star, but from what I have seen, it rarely seemed like it was only his fault. When LG Huya lost, so there is potential, but of course, uh, the rest of the team may be to blame, and that J-Mac did impressively well in trials when he was trying out for London Spitfire, otherwise, why would he get this position? So, I'm kind of concerned as he moves into more international competition as to whether he's going to be up to the caliber of other Overwatch League main tanks, but of course, he's got a strong coaching staff behind him who could give a lot of improvement to that main tank. Luckily for J-Mac, he's going to have one of the star players on this roster as his cohort. Bernard has been recruited from Fusion University, and this guy's been on a tear in contenders four seasons in a row. Fusion University came first, and when they went to Korea, it didn't go as well, but you can put a lot of it over to moving stresses and having to go straight to contenders Korea after winning the Overwatch Atlantic Showdown, which was no mean feat from them. So, uh... Yeah, I think Bernard's going to be one of the real pieces to watch on this roster, and hopefully London can hold on to him for a while. He's no Fury, so I would say it's still kind of a downgrade, because Fury is definitely in contention for the best off-tank in the world, and also one of the best players in the world as well. But I think Bernard's going to be a solid piece here, and I wouldn't say he's too much of a downgrade, but just a little bit. Okay, but on to the DPS, and this is where we have our biggest pickup. DPS number one on the hit scan is going to be Glister. Glister picked up from Gen G, one of the hottest pieces of DPS that was on the market in our 2019 offseason. I'm very happy that London picked him up. His Widowmaker, absolutely fantastic. Doomfist on another level, baby. Hanzo, also super good. He can flex around a little bit. He's got a little bit one of those hero pools where you can put him over onto those projectiles if you need to. But I don't know if they're really going to want to take Glister away from where he's at his most powerful. Unless it's a Doomfist meta. In which case, this guy can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sparkle any day of the week. Genji's results weren't that great with him. But I feel that Genji had problems elsewhere. And that it's definitely not Glister's fault. When we talk about downgrading though, you got to compare Glister to Birdring. And... Personally, I don't think Burgeoning was consistent enough, and Glister's probably going to be able to fill that a lot better. He's going to be able to be there every single game, likely. Of course, we don't know yet about the stresses of travel and how it will affect Overwatch League players, but I think the baseline for Burgeoning was incredibly high highs. Some of the best players in the world when he was really on fire, but oftentimes he just did not turn up. And the other person that Glister's going to be replacing in this is Guard, who... Had some good performances and his Sombra looked okay for the uh, London Spitfire, but most of the time, not the most impressive, even though it's probably because he wasn't getting as much scrim time compared to Burgering. So I imagine that this is actually going to be a little bit of an upgrade in the hitscan position for London. Next up for DPS, we have our projectiles, and that's going to be Shui, Runaway Alumni. One-time Contenders Champion and two-time Champion of the NEXT Cup. Although we've got to remember that he did win contenders during Season 3 of 2018 when GOATS was an unbeatable meta. He was playing Brigitte during that time, as many projectile DPS were, but it doesn't mean that he's won contenders as a real projectile DPS. He hasn't done it as a Farah or during one of those metas when you're really going to be seeing many projectile DPS being shown. So we've got to know, are we going to see a good Farah? Are we going to see a good Hanzo? Are we going to see a good Genji, a good Junkrat? All of these right now, a little bit of a mystery for Shui. We've seen him here and there, and he has been good enough, but not enough to win a championship off the back of him as far as we've seen. So, upgrade or downgrade, Shui? Despite the pedigree of coming from Runaway, in my opinion, Prophet's the best player in the world. So, no matter who you get, it's going to be a downgrade, and I'm kind of worried we haven't seen a huge amount of Shui on these projectile heroes when they are really required. Mostly seen that for Gita. So, for me, I'm just going to have a couple of question marks here. Potentially very coachable. There's a lot of potential here as well. He's been a part of successful teams before and he's going to bring a lot of team spirit 
to London Spitfire, but definitely, in my opinion, a downgrade. Okay, let's move on to look at main supports. There are two of them, as we did get rid of both Portomain and Nuss. Now we have Fuse and Sanguinar, and I gotta admit, this is gonna be the portion where I start to question things, because Fuse has never looked that individually great to me. Of course, with main support, it can be very hard to look like you're popping off, unless you're funny Astro, the Lucio, and the Mercy is often quite a thankless task, and it's very hard to look good if your team are not, but... Fuse, he's been across MVP space, MVP infinity, Gen G as well. These are all sort of a significant amount of backing behind them, but very few good results from these teams while Fuse has been on them. He's also played on Fusion University, and they didn't look great, but I'm not going to hold that one against him too much because he was imported towards the end of a contender season to try and uh, fix an ailing team that had just uh, sent Elk home, and they were trying to get someone who would be able to synergize with Alarm, but... Fuse is a, a somewhat question mark approach from me, but at least he does seem to have reliable placings in the professional scene. And our second main support is Sanguinar from Gen B, which is just what it sounds like. That's the academy team of the academy team. They've gone to Gen G's academy team and picked up their main support, which is a... Uh, I, I, London must have found him in open tryouts or something because they just plucked this guy out of the wilderness like he's come from nowhere Sanguinar is going to be either the biggest surprise of Owl 2020 or going to be an absolute dud of a bench boy who's just there to try and take some of the stress away from Fuse when he gets a bit tired from all the traveling I don't expect huge things here but I'm ready to be pleasantly surprised it's the point of the video so we've got to ask guys upgrade or downgrade. I'm going to go with a definite downgrade right here. Quartermain and Nuss, they were never the strongest part of London. And it was going to be very hard when you had so many stars on the team to be the strongest part as a main support. But Nuss was a championship winner. One season one. Definitely showed that he could pull out a clutch performance on the big stage. And Quartermain was at least somewhat reliable on that main support. And I definitely have no early recognition of these guys in terms of how we're going to be able to stack up. I don't think it's going to be great. There's potentially a lot more room for coachable players here. Like both of these guys have been across a couple of teams now. Maybe they're a little bit more receptive to coaching than London Spitfire were. Maybe the main supports, but I don't know, dude. I'm going to go with a definite downgrade on this one. And finally, we've got to look at our flex supports. That's going to be Hylie from Soul Dynasty and Krillin, who is the only member of the roster who actually carried over from last year or the year before, though Krillin did join at the beginning of 2019. I think he played between one and four maps for the Spitfire over the course of a disappointing 2019 season. And, well, he looked okay. They usually put him in when there was nothing to lose, so Krillin didn't really have to deal with pressure that much. And we're going to have to see how he deals with pressure when you need to be winning these matches to try and get yourself into those playoffs. Highly likely going to be... One of them starters. He looked okay when he played on Soul Dynasty. Wasn't a, a top 10 main support in my eyes, but he was definitely up there as one of the more effective players and definitely knew how to play on that Zen. The question is, are we going to have a huge amount of flexibility on our flex support roster? We haven't seen a huge amount. Who's going to be able to bring out the Ana? Both of these guys thus far have seemed like it's all about the Zen. And uh, between Krillin and Hylie, like I said, Hylie is going to be the starter here, but we, we just got rid of Bedoshin. Like, Bedoshin better be landing on another Owl team. Otherwise, I don't know why you get rid of Bedoshin. He was a top 10 main support. He played for Team South Korea. He was of that caliber. And at least main support looks a little bit weaker than flex support. So they got that going for them. But I don't understand why we have four supports in the first place compared to two DPS and two tanks as well. It feels like there's going to be... Potentially a lot of musical chairs going on with these guys. Are they going to be subbed out so that they can rest more? Because we're not going to see any substitutions for DPS. No DPS. Or tanks even. No substitutions for them. And the main tank is going to be calling a lot as well. So maybe we're going to see a couple more people come into the roster. And if it wasn't obvious, I consider these guys a downgrade from Bedoshin. Uh, Krillin is just a grade because we had him before, but Highly versus Bedoshin, you're going to take Bedoshin every single time, but Bedoshin's gone off on another path. So overall, this roster, I think we can agree that it's generally a significant downgrade from what London Spitfire had before. 
the in the main tank position. A huge downgrade from Gesture to J-Mac. Uh, Bernard, one of the best pickups that it's had. Huge downgrade, unfortunately, from Fury, who I think is the best off tank in the world in the DPS. Profit and Burdering, both stars, both gone. Glista looking okay. It's going to be one of the best pickups, but is he going to live up to Burdering? Is he going to live up to Profit? And also, Shui's going to be there as a big question mark. So, I have my doubts about this roster, but the good thing here for Spitfire is that these players may be far more coachable from a previous roster, which was definitely far more player-directed. And now Agape has been moved up into that head coach role. He's got Pavain coming in from NYXL as well to try and give a little bit of a helping hand here. We may see that these players become more than the sum of their parts through good coaching, or it could be that these guys are hidden gems who are going to have their potential unlocked. But when we look on paper, old roster versus new roster, this is not a fixing of problems. This is not an upgrade. This is a, this is a complete retooling of how Spitfire as an organization work. Maybe it's a retooling of where they want to be. Are they aiming for a win of the season anymore? Are they going for a, a playoff placement? Are they just trying to keep it going until you find out exactly where you want to be right here? What is a coaching system that works for you? And then can you slot players into that? It feels like a, a rebuild that after season one probably wasn't necessary, of course, because they did win and you can't really argue with that result. But after season two, you do feel like you need a bit of a rebuild. But the rebuild everyone said to do was blow up the roster and keep gesture, keep profit, keep fury. You didn't keep any of those. None of those talents remain. They are an Overwatch League, but not with Spitfire. It's going to be all about the coaching staff now. They've got to take these d gems. They, I don't know if they're gems. Maybe they're just rocks. Maybe they're pebbles. Can they polish them up, though? Can they make them into diamonds? That's a big question for Spitfire. And I'm kind of salty that Spitfire did not pick up Kaiser because I don't know if anyone on this roster speaks English and we're looking to go into a homestand model. And I feel like you really need someone on your roster who speaks English. I thought one of the best pickups that Spitfire could make in this offseason would be Ark because he's got really good English. He's really charming. He's charismatic. People are going to want to talk to him at homestands. The same for Kaiser. Kaiser's beloved. Good English. People are going to want to talk to him when they come to homestands in London. If you've got no names on your roster, and if no names can't speak English, is there going to be a huge temptation for people to spend that money to get those VIP tickets? Spending upwards of £500 to get those VIP tickets as well. Personally, I doubt that. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you look down below, find my Twitter tag, go follow me there so you know exactly where to find me when new videos are coming up like and subscribe and all that jazz and i will see you guys next time we break down some more overwatch stuff see you